It is the semi-final stage of the MIAA playoffs, and it's time for, uh, well, we got three left, but uh, our last pre-Thanksgiving WATD high school football fantasy draft. Welcome in. Quinn Kelly, Johnny Rourke, Brennan Connolly with you. Uh, and uh, yeah, let's get into it, boys. We had um, our, our biggest combined point total of the year last year. Credit to, uh, credit to Brendan, saw the board exceptionally well. And uh want to go over some of the highlights from this past week because uh there were there were quite a few. Um top scoring quarterback of the whole season, uh Ben Scalzi with a 49 point performance, thanks to his six three Ds and six TDs and over 300 yards. John McDonald was the chief beneficiary of that, um, had 38 points. Uh, with three TDs, he also benefits from being their kicker as well. But uh, had two more wide, three more wide receivers above twenty points. Uh, no, I'm sorry, two more. One more, one more. Nick Couples and then Alex Barlow, Jamison Helms, Davin True at the running back position, all over twenty points. It was a huge week for everybody. Uh, so a lot of fun. But with that, Brendan. Took home the win, number one spot. Johnny was uh, behind him, and then I brought up the rear. So uh, the order will be the reverse of that this week. Quinn, Johnny, Brendan, uh, we will be picking from the eight South Shore Metro South area teams remaining. Those are uh, Severian in Division One, Marshfield in Division Two, Milton in Division Three, Duxbury Situate in Division Four, Hanover in Division Five. Unfortunately, nobody in Division Six. And then Cohasset in D7 and Carver in D8. So players from those teams only will reopen the field to everybody on the South Shore for next week's Thanksgiving edition uh, WATD Fantasy Draft. But for now, it is uh, it is those eight teams. So with that, I'm going to head to the podium with my round one pick. And um, and I think this one this one's an easy for me, easy one for me. Uh, I'm going to go with one of just my absolute favorite players in the area, uh, Tyler Lennox, quarterback out of Carver. Um, I, you know, I, I, I'm all in on this Carver team. Is really what it comes down to. Uh, have been on them since December of last year, and looking forward to seeing if they can just get that one more and get to Gillette. I want to see this team at Gillette. If they get there, Tyler's a huge reason why he's over 6,000 yards passing. Um, Coach Ben Chavane tells me that's good for uh, for top 10 all time in, in state history. And I, 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 I'm not questioning it. I just need to see the record books. I, I'd love to get my eyes on those uh, because I, I think mm-hmm. there are probably a couple of kids here recently on the South Shore. Festa jumps to mind that would be right up there with them as well. Uh, but Tyler has been sensational. Um, and I'm sure he's going to have another big week. So I want Tyler Lennox on my board, uh, to see, uh, what he can do to, uh, who's that Valley's defense. All right, Johnny, take us into, uh, take us to pick two. I'm going to go running back with my first pick and I'm going to go up to division one and I'm going to go Denzel Pierre from Severian. Um, He's a, he's a guy that it really doesn't seem who they, you know, really doesn't seem to matter who they play. He's going to step up and he's going to, make an impact. Um, you know, Severian's a team that can put up points. Hopefully they don't, you know, take a step back after that emotional win against Springfield Central. But Peter's a guy that uh, is going to play a huge role. Yeah, and with that, I'll, I'll, I'll give you the hat tip. We talked about it on Sunday, but uh, a great pick on the Severian defense for you last week. And uh, just just a good, good reward. Actually, a couple of those. Johnny going with Severian. Uh, Brendan going with Lawson Foley out of his alma mater situate uh, just goes to show pick with your heart and you can't go wrong. Uh, and I think Denzel Pierre, same thing. He was, he was great for them last week, had a touchdown. Uh, I think had almost 90, 90 yards rushing. Um, he has been a workhorse for them in the absence of Charlie Camella for much of this season. And uh, yeah, I expect he'll have another big week against Needham. All right, Brendan. Uh, going into this draft, I highlighted three quick players that I really wanted to take with my first pick. And, of course, Quinn takes Tyler Lennox with the first pick. So I'm, gonna have to put the, I'm just not going to be able to get the uh, South Shore League star this week. I'm going to have to turn to your alma mater. I'm going to go with a wide receiver who was picked during the regular season. 
but hasn't been picked in the postseason yet. Jonathan Montero, I think he's poised to have a big game coming up against Needham. They're going to have to have a, a pretty good game back and forth. And I feel like he's due for one of those 60-yard catch and runs. I think it's interesting because we had this long conversation um, because I think D1 is a really, intri- a really intriguing Final Four. And we had this conversation on Sunday on the Sports Exchange. Uh, and if you missed that episode, of course, you can head over to our SoundCloud page and, and listen in. We'll give a full breakdown of uh, Elite Eight weekend and a preview for Final Four weekend. Um, but I think telling here two Hawks come off the board right away that uh, this panel's feeling pretty good about their chances to to get through uh, to the state finals. And, uh, and I think those two guys that come off right there are, are a big reason why. And, uh, and I think John Montero, um, he's, he's had a couple of games this season where it's been surprising that he's been held in check, but by and large, um, he's, he, he's found a way to get his, um, and I imagine it'll be a, an, another, another one of those weeks for him. Um, all right. That's going to jump us to round two and, with my second round pick, uh, I believe I'm going to go into the running back room, and I'm going to go with Nathan Huey from uh, Milton. I think that um, I think they've got an interesting matchup. Lowest seed remaining, uh, I believe, anywhere in the tournament uh, with Westfield, the number ten seed, getting through to the final four this year. Um, Seeds kind of go out the window when you win your first two legs of the playoffs. You know, in, in the final four, clearly, uh, clearly something was wrong with the way that you were ranked. So I think that Milton's matchup certainly probably a lot tougher than it looks on paper. Um, we'll see how much they lean on the ground game, but Nathan Huey has cemented himself from about the middle of the season on as uh, the feature back in that Milton offense. And uh, I think I've had him once this season. I'm excited to get him on the board again. All right, John. I'm going to go running back again. I'm going to go to the Situate Grafton game. I'm going to go Willie Robinson, running back from Situate. Situate's a they're a fun team to watch. You know, they they do it in all all facets of the game and, you know, obviously that Duxbury Situate game is kind of looming if they can both get to Gillette, but both of them are going to have, you know, tough battles ahead of them. So, you know, I think Situate is going to have to mix in the run as well as the pass. So, I'm going to go with Willie I like it. Each of you taking one from each other's alma maters. <laughs> a couple of shots across the bow. Um, yeah, I, I mean, Willie, Willie's had a few huge games this season. Um, I think they're, they're, you know, Grafton's a good team, obviously. Um, I think Situate's got a battle as much against kind of the emotional release. Well, you talked a little bit about this with Severian. I think Situate's in kind of a similar position. That's a, It's a huge win over Holliston last week. And I think you got to just be ready to move right along, face a Grafton team. And, uh, yeah, I think Willie, Willie plays a big part in, in helping them to get that win. All right, Brennan. Well, that makes my next pick a lot easier. I'm just going to fill up my wide receiver pool here. And I'm going to stick with the situate sailors. I wouldn't be doing my due diligence if I didn't have a pick from my sailors, right? I'm going to go with uh, Charlie Hotwell. I think he's uh, been really picking it up in their offense the last couple of games. Usually, it feels like he's good for a touchdown at the very least, be it 10 yards and the touchdown or 50 yards and two scores. That just seems to be what he's been doing lately. He's been finding the end zone, and that's why I'm going to go with him this week. Yeah, they're, they're, they're somebody we've talked about in the past. I said this last week when you went with Lawson, Brendan, that, that Lawson has separated himself, and, and he's become Jackson Belson's favorite target. Um. But for so much of this season, they were a hard pool of receivers to pick from because they've got so much talent and depth in that room that any week somebody can get on the board. Uh, and for now, a couple of weeks, it's felt like Charlie's been really hot. And uh, so I, I think a great pick. All right, that'll move us to round three. And with that, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to close up my running back room. Um, and I'm going to go with Vinny Mancini, uh, from Hanover. I think by and large, when you think Hanover, it's, it's obviously been the passing attack for them. Um, and that comes first in that offense as well. It should, when they can pass, when you can pass as well as they can, uh, you know, why wouldn't you lean on the passing attack? But, um, you know, I think Vinny still plays a crucial role 
uh, very much similar to last year for them uh, when it was Nick Friel doing it. Um, you know, maybe not as pronounced a role as Friel had for 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 Vinny, but um, you know, I think that they play good complementary football on offense, and that's why it really works uh, and works well down there in Hanover. So, uh, give me Vinny, and uh, and I'm, I'm happy with my uh, my running back duo, Johnny. Well, you got the quarterback. I'm going to go the wide receiver. I'm going to go Robbie Peterson from Carver. Um, I just think, I mean, he's a dog. I'm a big fan of Robbie's and I think he, he's, he's poised to have a big game. Um, I think it's a really good matchup for Carver and you know, I hope to see them in Gillette. And I think, you know, Robbie's a big reason why. I'll gush over Carver at, at any given opportunity, but Robbie really, I, I enjoy Robbie quite a bit. I think that he is just the exact type of leader you want on your football team. Um, I kind of talked about it with them when we had them in studio uh, earlier this season, that going back to when I spoke to them uh, in the preseason and talked to them about, hey, you know, this is a team that hasn't done a lot in a lot of years and you are coming into the season with a lot of expectations. And I think Robbie just kind of exudes a confidence, um, has that want the ball, want the pressure, uh, bring it all on kind of mentality that the whole team has affected. And he's certainly not the only one in that locker room that has it. I think Tyler's right there with him. I think a whole bunch of other Crusaders are right there with him, and that's why they're so good. Um, but Robbie, to me, seems like one of the most vocal captains over there and uh, and I think is is obviously just a sensational player. And I don't know that it'll get you stats, but he's also an absolute stud on the defensive side of the ball, Johnny. So I think he had one point when we did their game against Hull, I believe he had two interceptions in that game. And that, that brought him to where he had more interceptions than completed passes against in coverage. So I think after like seven weeks, he had four catches against and five interceptions. So uh, he's a pretty, pretty fantastic two-way player. Uh, Brendan. Uh, I'm looking at quarterbacks right now, um, and I'm debating two completely different options here. Uh, one is going to be, I feel like, chasing most of the game, but still could have put up stats. The other one, I feel like, is going to get out to a, a lead to start, and then his team could rely on the run game, and he won't get as many points in the second half. So that's the predicament I'm in right now. I'm going to go with Patrick Miller out of Milton, though. I think they're going to keep the offense rolling. They're going to put up big points to start, and then they'll uh, find a way to get the win and keep things to, uh, things going from there. Yeah, I, I think, and again, we, we talked similarly about this on Sunday where they've been such an interesting case because, you know, they had full, uh, just completely backed their way into the playoffs and things didn't look great for them. Um, but they're, they've gotten it going at the right time. And Patrick Miller is playing really, really good football right now for them um and i think that i i, I think he's going to be um he, he's got a big week ahead of him again this week so uh i think that's a, that's a solid pick for you brennan they just reloaded quarterback over at milton baby every it's, year it really is incredible <laughs> it really is incredible they uh yeah there just doesn't seem to be uh doesn't seem to be any light up for him um all right i'm gonna go uh i'm gonna go I want to double dip here with Carver and I'm going to go to go to the wide receiver room. And I don't think this guy's come off the board at all this year. Um, so I'm really happy to get him. He's been a fantastic target for Lennox. I'm hoping that uh, he'll get on the board this week uh, with, with a touchdown after not hauling one in last week in the, in the offensive frenzy for him. I'm going with Derek Lopes. Um, eats up yardage for them. One of their great options. I think at, with each round further that Carver goes in this, it feels like they're probably going to see some defenses that can at least present more of a challenge for their top receiver target. So maybe that, you know, if Peterson's getting eaten up a little bit, maybe that opens things up for some other guys. Not that really anyone in division eight can eat Robbie Peterson up, but I think Derek Lopes is going to have his opportunities uh, in this ball game. So uh, I'll get him on the board um, for the first time and, and, and thrilled to have him. I'm going to go Tormas. I'm going to go with the Marshfield quarterback. 
you know, I mean, you got to draw a line in the sand at some point and you got to say, hey, you know, we're here and we're, we're going to do our best against this team. And, and I think they bring it. I think Marshfield brings it. And I think Tormas is going to have to have a fantastic game for them to be in it. And I think he will. I'm like, so I'm convincing myself that they, that they're going to drag this one right to the end. Like, I know that there's, you know, it's still CM. And I think that what you saw last week was a great example of like CM given who they lost to injury this year, you know, maybe he's going to let some teams hang around, but then like, it was a masterclass second half performance from them. They still put up 42. They still won by 21. Marshfield's a lot better team than Wellesley. And they've they're the hottest offense in the state right now. They've scored more points in the tournament than than anybody else. I don't think they've put up less than forty points in a game in like seven or eight weeks. I think they're going to put some points up on the board. I think Tormas is a a problem. I think he's a legitimate problem, especially in the ground game. I think they move so fast. I think that they I just if they're if they get it going if they stay hot on offense. I think they can at least give themselves a chance at this one in the fourth quarter. So I like the pick, Johnny. I, I like riding with the Rams. And uh, boy, I, I I would kill to see them knock off CM. I think that would be just about as good as it gets. All right, Brennan, close out round four. Well, that was actually the other quarterback I was pondering. I was saying like, hey, sometimes when you're playing catch up, you got to pass in order to keep up, right? You got to mm. do that. And I feel like he's a candidate to put up big points, just regardless of how many. I picked, I picked Tor because he's going to be playing with the lead. <laughs> nice. I like it. I like it. <laughs> there you go. That's the swagger we like, Johnny. Um, I think I've got to uh, pick running backs, however. And I, if I'm not mistaken, we're down to like only two or three. After all the yeah, picks you can move. Made. You have a little more freedom, Brendan. I'm not going to hold you to just who's unavailable or who's available. Okay, I he, uh, I know the other situate running back is available, Alex Burrow, at this moment, and I feel like he gets just as much carry and much play as Willie Robinson does. The question is, who gets the ball at the goal line? Mm -hmm. And that's going to be the difference. But you are going with Alex Burrow. I'm going to go with Alex Burrow. I like it. I like it. All right. Call me a sailor, honk. Yeah, I don't think anybody's questioning You've been that. called. You've been <laughs> called worse, Brendan. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, so, uh, Alex, um, yeah, and with that, I guess I, I should say, too, now that uh, we've gotten to this stage, but uh, it, it does, oh, by Wednesday, this will be, I think, pretty firm, but uh, we are headed to Mansfield uh, this Friday night for our South Shore game of the week, which will be Situate versus Grafton. Uh, and if uh, and if you're out there in... Uh, in, in YouTube land or radio land or wherever you're listening to this, just say a prayer for old Quinn that he's not stuck outside of the press box this week. Cause oh. I just don't know if I have oh, it. It's, in not, it's not confirmed yet. Yeah, no. Uh, my yeah. understanding is that it's going to be pretty yeah, much. You're going to be in the, you're going to be in the last row. Of the stands. It's, a, it's a race for space. So um, yeah, Mansfield community television, I guess is putting on a broadcast of that game. So uh, there's a chance hey. that that's what holds me out. So I'm just, uh, you know, fingers crossed. The race uh, is on. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll see. But uh, in any case, it's going to be a great game. I'm looking forward to it. So, um, you know, hopefully I don't need to thaw me out after it. Um, all right, that brings us to round five. Give me my defense and uh, give me the Milton Wildcats. Um, haven't come off the board in the playoffs yet. Uh, I think that... Of you know, of the teams that haven't come off, I think they're, they're the best option this week. Um, I think the defense has come to play in these playoffs. Uh, I think that you know they're coming off of or they're facing the team that's coming off of a game in which they put up thirty four points uh, against you know the two seed against a very good Bill Ricca team. So Milton's going to have their hands full, but um, they like their chances. All right, Johnny. I need a I need one more receiver. There's actually a, there's a lot of good receivers left in the playoffs, and I guess that makes sense because these are really good teams. But I'm going to go to the Duxbury Tuxbury matchup. I'm going to go with Zach Falls. Um, I mean, I was really impressed with him 
when we when we saw him earlier in the season in person. And I just, I think that'll continue. I think he's a guy that that they can lean on, and no matter what type type of game it is, I feel like he's a guy that you look to. You know, even if you're up or you're down, you say, hey, you know, Zach's going to go get the ball and he's going to catch it. So I think he's uh, he's going to be my pick here for the, the second wide receiver. Yeah, I think um, he's he's asserted himself as the season has gone on. He's a guy that um, I don't mean this with any disrespect to either Trevor Jones or Finn Carley, but um, he dealt with a broken hand last year and I would have loved to seen him with a full season with with Matt Festa at quarterback, just what he could have done, what kind of numbers he could have put up. Um, I think he's uh, a special talent. He's a huge target, obviously. So, um, yeah, he's he's going to – I mentioned he's going to do some things this week that are going to leave you smiling, Johnny. So, uh, great pick. All right, Brennan. Uh, we've picked each of the Milton running backs over the course of the year. Um, I did just pick Luke Hartford, I think, two weeks ago or three weeks ago. So I'm going to go with AJ Cicerone to close out my uh, player pool. Um, I think regardless of who you pick among these three, they're all talented and all can put up big numbers. Yeah, I agree. That's just a matter of, you know, who's who's kind of punching it in. And I like their you... matchup this week. And that's a big reason to ride with Milton, I think. Yeah, yeah, totally agree. Um, yeah, I like it. I like it. Um, all right, that takes us to round five, uh, and that takes us to uh, my final pick of the draft. It's just going to be uh, my wide receiver. I got a few options here, and let me just see. I want to do a quick bit of research. I'm between two, and yeah. You know, what? I'm gonna I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with the sophomore. I'm gonna go with Brandon Erico out of Hanover. Um, I think that. You know, I think he had a couple scores last week for him. They're moving around the offense in different ways. He's supremely talented, kind of a future of the program type kid. Um, but he's he's gonna play a big role in in one of the results that I am most certain of this weekend. I would say. Um, so give me Brandon Erico. Johnny, your final pick looking for a defense. Yeah, give me the Rams. They're I mean they are they're doing it. They're, they will they will hold He's all in. They will hold Catholic Memorial to less than twenty one points. Yeah. And <laughs> Marshfield will beat Catholic Memorial thirty four to twenty. And it's going to be largely on the back of Tormas and this defense. And I'm excited to see them at Gillette. I really am. I love it. I love it. Why not? Uh, you gotta, I mean, you got to, at a certain point, somebody's got to put their foot down and say, no more. No, no more. And I, no I Moss. Think, no Tormas. No Tormas. <laughs> no Tormas. <laughs> I like it. I like it. I'm I, I'm all in on us just convincing ourselves, we're, we're but you're putting your money where your mouth is. We're willing this team to victory. I like it. Hey, it worked last last week with Severian. You had him for I think 14 points allowed and and three turnovers and gave up a few more points, but but got one extra turnover. I think finished 20 points allowed and four turnovers. Uh, so the defense hey. whisperer strikes again. <laughs> I don't know which was a gutsier pick, honestly. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I mean, Frank, yeah, honestly, it's a very I think it's crazy. pretty similar. Yeah, no, honestly. All right. Uh, Brendan, final pick of the draft, looking for defense. I guess that just leaves me with a full situate and a full Milton team with Jonathan Montero as my other receiver in this one uh, because I'm going to have to go with the situate defense. That's the. Uh, uh, last remaining matchup on the board, and I think it's a tough one against Grafton. But no. at the same time, I think they have the uh, talented pieces defensively to make plays and uh, have a big uh, breaking play or two during the course of it. I'm desperate for Duxbury situate round two. Um, yeah, yeah. So ride with the situate Sailors defense. I like it. All right, that closes out the draft. 
uh, our uh, Final Four edition draft in the books. So I'll read you the rosters. Uh, I got Tyler Lennox out of Carver at my quarterback position. My running backs, Nathan Huey out of Milton. Vinny Mancini out of Hanover. My wide receivers, Derek Lopes out of Carver. And Brandon Arico out of Hanover with my uh, defense being Milton. Johnny, your quarterback, Tormas out of Marshfield. You are running back, Stenzel Pierre out of Severian. And I believe, Alex, uh, no, uh, Willie Robinson out of Situate. You are wide receivers, Robbie Peterson out of Carver. And Zach Falls out of Duxbury with the Marshfield defense. And uh, Brendan, as you said, three Situate sailors uh, on the team. Uh, going with uh, Alex Burrell at running back, as well as the Situate defense and and uh, Charlie Hartwell at wide receiver. Your other uh, running back is AJ Cicero, and your quarterback is Patrick Miller out of Milton, and your other wide receiver is John Montero out of the Severian. Uh, yeah, that does it. We will uh, we'll see you next time. That's another WATD fantasy draft in the books for Brennan and Johnny. I'm Quinn, uh, and we'll catch you. Uh, Friday night, Saturday afternoon, TBD, and then uh, and then Sunday for the Sports Exchange to wrap it all up. <laughs>